Hi, I'm Annalise Record, and I'm the administrator of this Math Running Records Facebook group. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome you all to the group, uh, and I wanted to provide for you a little bit of a background and uh, understanding of what running records are, in case you are new to them. Uh, first of all, as a little bit of background, I was a grade 5 teacher for 13 years, uh, and then I became the math coach for both my K-2 school and my 3-5 to five school here in Berlin, New Hampshire, beautiful White Mountains. Uh, for, I did that for two years, and then the second two years, um, I've been focused only on my grade 3 to 5 school. We hired another math coach like me down at the K-2 school, so we could really um, focus on the individual schools. Um, so when I was working in the role as math coach, and even as a classroom teacher, um, when I, my students were struggling in math, I really didn't have a whole lot of data about what exactly they needed to move on, and particularly math facts. I remember I would give these timed tests to my students. They had uh, two and a half minutes, and they had 50 problems to do, and I set my timer, uh, and then I would correct them, and I really wouldn't do anything with the information. I would just give them a grade in their report card, whether they were outstanding, satisfactory, needs improvement, uh, and I just moved on. And uh, to be honest, I did not focus on fluency at all. Even though I knew my students struggled within the context of larger computational problems, I really did not do anything uh, to help them with their fluency. Um, and so, and even I didn't even know specifically what they needed to get better at math facts. Uh, I attempted at one point to make personalized flashcards for them, and they could use just the ones that they didn't master, and it got incredibly complicated with a classroom of over 20 students. Um, so then, a few years ago, uh, Dr. Nikki Newton created a webinar about this new thing she invented, a protocol for an interview with students called a math running record. Uh, and I opted to take the webinar. I had seen her at a um, couple of conferences, and I loved everything that she had to share, so I was open to learn this new thing that she had to share. So I took the webinar, and it literally since then has changed my life. <laughs> the math writing records have been phenomenal. The more that I've learned about early elementary education with math, the more that I see that the math running records are the foundation for everything. They encompass everything that I believe in. Things like growth mindset and, tell, and, and helping students realize they don't need to be fast at math to be good at math. And when we think strategically how much more we can have our number sense built, computations that might take more difficult ways of doing it, um, we can do more easily for our brains. Um, and a lot more students who traditionally have thought that they were not good at math and they weren't, didn't have a math brain, um, that they can understand that that's not true at all. Anyone can learn math and it's all uh, based on our experiences and our attitudes toward math that we do have the ability to change our brains and learn new things. So this math running record has been transformative uh, in my schools. We've been using them for a few years now. Um, I began first in the K-2 school using them uh, and then expanded now to my 3-5 school as well. And it literally has changed the atmosphere and the way we talk about our students and what their needs are. It's been super exciting and super powerful. Um, so I want to explain a little bit about what math running records are. So they are an interview, uh, a protocol for an interview. This is based on tons of research that Dr. Nikki did for us to create this. So. Many people have asked, can she create another version of the running record? And the answer is, well, not easily, because the numbers and the expressions that are on there for our benchmark expressions are research-based. Research has shown they're particularly difficult for kids, um, and so it can't easily just be randomly changing numbers. Um, it, pro it provides a foundation of strategic a progression, kind of this, a math journey for our students, and we were able to zoom in on exactly what the students need and figure out exactly what they need to help them move forward forward uh, in the progression of the strategies. Along the way, we're building their confidence because we're only working on math facts that they need to work on and the ones they've already mastered. So we're not throwing all the math them with some flashcards and saying, here, memorize them all. Uh, in fact, they're not memorizing them at all. We want them to use strategies to be more efficient with their thinking so they can recall those facts. Do we want them to be automatic? Of course, we'd love them to get their math facts with automaticity, uh, but there's different ways of getting there than just memorizing the math facts. And there are ways we can get them there that provide a foundation for their mathematical thinking. And that's what the math running records allow us to do. Um, so there are three basic parts to the math running record. The first part is the um, benchmark expressions, one for every strategy in the progression, where we ask the students to figure out um, orally, you know, it, we ask them orally and they can do it in their head about solving some problems. Now, um, at that point, I only record things that are obvious about their behaviors. I want to get a, a, just a reading on their relative speed. The students don't know it. I don't want them to know that it's timed in any way at all. But in my head, I'm counting, is it within 
three seconds? Is it within five seconds or was it prolonged thinking? So I'm being aware of the speed uh, that the students use to be able to solve the problems. And then I'm thinking about the accuracy. So I wanna make sure that if they are accurate, that I know that, or if they were speedy but not accurate, that I know that as well. Um, and I'm also looking at their behaviors. Are they using their fingers? And if they're using the fingers, are they counting on with their fingers? Or were, are they counting all? So I'm kind of being aware of all these different things that are really these early numeracy look-fors. Um, and then once, I just, when, once I've done that, and I, and I will stop it if I feel the students are really struggling, if they get a lot wrong, I, I shouldn't be uh, enduring this <laughs> laborious thing. But if they are doing fine, we'll go through the front sheet. Um, and then I'll go on the second side. Now the second side is the really magical, amazing part. That is the interview of students. And there have been so many surprises and moments of aha for me as, a, as a, the, the math specialist to be able to hear these kids and what they're thinking. It is incredible um, what these kids can come up with for strategies and think of their things, things that I wouldn't have predicted. And I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't asked them in this running record. So it's just been super, super enlightening and powerful. So on the second part then, I'm asking them to generalize a strategy. So they may know that um, five plus zero equals a five, but do they know that in general that anything, anytime we add a zero to any number, it's going to end up being the same number because we're adding nothing to it. Um, so we're generalizing the strategies and we're testing the strategy with a couple more expressions to see whether they have a solid foundation of that strategy. Because again, the purpose of this running record is to figure out where do I respond instructionally with these students. And so the second side is when I do ask them, how did you do that? What went on in your brain to figure that out? And I'll ask them if they said they were they counted, I'll say, well, did you count? Where did you start counting from? Or did you count from? And I can see their fingers are, and they'll very be very honest, they'll say they use their fingers or they're counting in their head. You can see the head bobbing when they're doing that kind of a thing. Um, but they're very honest and I really want to know exactly where are they. Because if a student sees an expression 2 plus 6 and is starting at the 2 and counting on 6, that's a different instructional response than a student that starts at the 6 and counts on the 2. Also very different for a student who puts out two fingers and tries to do six fingers and tries to count all of them up. So it's very enlightening um, in this part of the running record to find out exactly what our students are thinking and doing. Um, and then finally, the third part is the math disposition. A lot of research has been done showing that when students believe that they can learn and it's in their, in their power to learn new things, they do better. So we want to get a reading on where are the children with their disposition toward math um, and toward their own abilities and what do they do when they get stuck. So those three basic parts of the um, running record are what forms the foundation of it. Now, um, when Dr. Nikki first came out with her running record and I began using it in my school, I had found that we had some needs in my school that weren't addressed on the running record. For example, we do give uh, grades on a report card um, for their math facts. And so we needed to figure out how we're gonna figure this out because there's three parts to fluency, right? There's the speed, relative speed, there's the accuracy, and then there's this flexibility, strategic thought. So how do we come to conclusion? And we didn't wanna give time tests. We don't want students feeling pressure like that. Um, so the running record became our assessment for this and we had to think of rubrics, you know, what are we expecting for our students to do at the different grade levels and what would that look like? So I then began tweaking the running record to make it my own um, with Dr. Nikki's knowledge. I had shared it with her to show you to her what I had done um, and I so I've re been reworking on it over and over for the last few years, and it's finally at the point where Dr. Nikki and I have worked together to finalize my version of the running record, and so I'm about to share these with you within this Facebook group as well. Um, and I'll be creating videos to explain to you what exactly each of the different parts of the running record mean, but uh, just, just know that these have been taking years in the, in the, the, uh, the making, and th there were a lot of effort from my classroom teachers that I work with, who have been very gracious, um, providing lots of advice, um, and prep myself administering hundreds of these to students. Um, so a lot of details can be debated and how do we do this and how do we do that and I am totally willing to engage anybody in any conversation that they want to make sure that we are all on the same page. It is super important within a school to be on the same page and be consistent so that we can use the data uh, to help us in, in responding instructionally. And that is the bottom line. It's not whether I give them a four or a three or do I circle this or do I put this code there. The whole point of these is for us to understand where our students are and create an instructional plan to meet those and move them forward on their journey. We want to create a positive beginning to their foundational thinking um, for everything that comes forward because these very same strategies that work with basic facts work with larger numbers and they even work with fractions and decimals down the road to build a lot of number sense um, that is super super important so um, so 
Please stay tuned to the videos and the new released updated versions of the math running records. Um, I'll be posting things in here about the data we can use, uh, how we can collect the data so we know how we can form our groups, um, as well as the newest versions of these, and I'll be explaining what the different sections and all. Um, but I wanted to pro provide this first kind of introductory welcome video and uh, explain to you the overall view of these running records. Um, they have been transformational in my schools and for my life in particular. Um, and I just want to say that there is nothing elementary about teaching elementary math. The more that I learn, the more that I realize that I have to learn, and we are all in this together. So thank you for joining the group, and feel free to welcome anybody else that you'd like to. Uh, we were, we'll be much better together than working in our own little silos. Um, so please be in touch, and take care.